Democratic Republic of Congo, the heart of darkness. During the last 10 years, one out of every 12 people in Congo died in a bloody civil war that claimed the lives of 5 million people, the highest death count of any war since World War II. Tragically, most died from disease or starvation. Murder, rape, and the use of child soldiers has given DRC the worst human rights violations record in the world over the last 10 years. 1.1 million people are still displaced by war. A country of children. Half of the population of 60 million people are under the age of 16. Malaria, typhoid, tuberculosis, and amoebic dysentery are rampant. The average healthy life expectancy is only 35 years. One out of five children will die before the age of five. These are people desperate for hope. And yet, the Three Angels' messages have barely touched the 14 million people living in the jungles of the vast northern Congo River Basin. What can be done to reach them with the truth? Congo Frontline Missions was born to bring light to the heart of darkness. In 2003, my father and I were invited to share about the church planting work we were doing in Tanzania at the division meetings in Nairobi, Kenya. And that's when I came face to face for the first time with the church leaders in Congo. I really hadn't known very much about Congo, but they started telling me about the challenges there, about the problems that they'd had with war and um, communication, poor roads, and they just really wanted to be able to train their church members who'd been somewhat scattered and um, troubled by the, the war and the pain that they'd gone through. And from that time, I really had a burden on my heart for the people of Congo. In 2008, after I finished my education in pastoral ministry, I moved back to DRC with Pastor Mtenzi to start a work here of reaching out to people in dark areas. Our first training session we did, we trained 74 laymen in a church in town with just one outdoor toilet for everybody and people slept and ate and uh, were, had classes all in the same place. It was really a, a cramped, tough environment, but the Lord blessed. From that point on, we just began seeing miracle after miracle. We received this land cruiser. We um, received money to start preparing a campus, which you can see has housing and uh, an administration building and a, a shop and, and storage building. We're just so blessed. But most of all, what I'm excited about is the Evangelism Training Center. And these five buildings, um, the dormitories, the cafeteria and the classroom, are the place that we can prepare an army of workers to go out and open the gospel to these people. The biggest miracle was people. Uh, my family was involved in this terrible plane crash, but through that experience they realized the Lord was opening the door and calling them to come to Congo. Then Nathan Rittenauer joined our team as development director. And then Tammy Rittenauer came in as my wife to join the project. We've just been so blessed to have people, Pastor Mtenzi, working with us from the beginning. And he is not only the director of our church planting, but he's also the director of the training school. First of all, we really want to thank the Lord for what has been going on here. Uh, we thank him for um, having people come to our school and we train them how to reach people for Jesus Christ because we know Jesus is coming soon. The first thing is we train them on how to go house to house uh, and then we train them on um, public evangelism, preaching and, and, and reaching people in dark areas. And the other thing also we teach them on how to plant the churches. You know, it's not easy to plant the church if you don't know how to do it. So we, we teach them and we tell them how they can do to reach people for Jesus Christ. The students are always very much excited when they come to our school. They really want to know how can they do to reach people in the dark areas. So they will always come and say, Pastor, what is the first thing do I need to do? 
to reach the people in dark areas because some have been trying recently but they couldn't do it very well. So I would always tell them uh, the first thing you, you need to do is to pray because when you pray then you have guidance from God and also protection. Because the thing is this, sometimes some of these areas we are working, they are really very, very dangerous. If you really don't put yourself in the hands of the Lord, it will be hard for you. They have passion for the work of God. Especially after the training, they are really revived. And they want to work for the Lord. Because in training, they learn that Jesus is soon coming. You know. And then they say, no, we need to go plant the churches. And they know that this area, I mean this country, especially this upper part of the country, most of the villages, they are not reached. So they feel a burden of reaching their fellow men, their fellow Congolese. It takes money to, to plant the church in dark areas of the Congo. Um, it takes like 600 US dollars to launch the church planter. And this is mainly for buying his bicycle and also Bibles and, and other tools for his work, like a portable speaker system. Um, we also use that money for moving him from his home to a new area. And that is not enough. We also need to give them 80 US dollars to, uh, as a stipend for him each month. Honestly speaking, there's a lot of challenges over here. I remember one time people wanted to stone us. They threw stones and the, and the laptop was over there and other people and people started running. I said, don't worry, the Lord will take care of us. After our last training, some of our students were really very sorry because we could not hire them. They had the passion to work for God. They've traveled all this big, dis big distance to come to Kisangani. But when we told them, this time we don't have money to hire you, they were so sorry. But most of them said, whether you pay us or no, we'll work for the Lord. But I know it will be hard for them to work if no one is assisting them somehow. Most of the area I visited, I can see that the areas are ripe. People are ready for the gospel. And there are few people who are ready to go. So let us pray that the Lord will provide more means to reach more people in the Congo. As long as the door is open, let us work before the door is closed. You know, God has just continued to send us blessing after blessing. Just last year, a man sent us a well drilling unit, and that has already helped us to get fresh water here on campus and start drilling wells out in the villages. And as the funding continues to come in, we'd like to put a well in each of the villages where we're planting churches. You know, with the parasites and amoebic dysentery and typhoid, fresh water can solve the largest amount of health needs in any single village. Reading material is another blessing God has given us. Light Bearer sent us um, Swahili and Lingala and French tracts that we've been able to give out and our church planters are using these for Bible studies. ASI has helped us with a $20,000 donation to print books in the Lingala and Swahili languages. And now Adventist World Radio has helped us to buy the materials to get started producing radio programs and broadcasting them over the city. Three Angels Radio will be producing material for over a million people and Frank Ricks has now joined us as the director of the station. His wife Valerie is helping us to launch our medical missionary program. The Pygmies have just been a new addition to our work. We're so blessed to be able to work with these people. We've already started working in over 30 camps and we have five schools to help with their children to get an education. It may be just a small start but God is going to do great things among these little people. I'm sure of it. The work in front of us is so big. People are giving us calls from Aru in the northeast, from Mbandaka in the west, from Chad and Burundi. We just see so many people that 
need to be trained. So many people that haven't heard the message. So many people who are not yet ready to meet their Savior face to face. We have people who have donated, a number of individuals who've helped us get started. We have people who pray for us on a regular basis. Most importantly, we have a loving Savior who meets our needs each and every day, who gives us the strength to continue on and serve Him. What I know for sure is God calls each one of us, and He gives us the strength to, take, to follow through on that calling. He promised us, Paul was writing this down in the book of Philippians, he said, My God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God has supplied our needs and prepared us to serve. And I know He's going to do that same thing for you when you put yourself on the line, when you step forward in faith and give yourself entirely to God. As you put Him first, He will take care of your needs.